Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to build a new 5-inch racing quadcopter using a couple of interesting parts. First of all, the frame I'm going to use is the Akusa AL226 frame. It features a high-quality 4K carbon, interchangeable arms with a thickness of 4mm, it's pretty light and weighs around 85 grams, it supports both 20x20 20 20 and 30x30 30 30 mounting options, and finally, it's a hybrid frame, so you can change the position of the arms. Currently, it is configured as a true X quadcopter, but if you'd like, you can simply remove this screw over here, and then use the third hole in order to switch between a stretch X and a squish X design. The next interesting part that I'm going to use is the Asgard 32 F7 flight controller. It features a built-in 4-in-1 BLR32 35A ESC, it can support up to 6S like batteries and it features 5 free UART ports. Using this flight controller is going to make your build pretty simple, however the downside of course is that if one component goes wrong, you will need to change the ESC and the flight controller. The flight controller came pre-flashed with PetaFlight 3.40 and in order to update it, you will need to enter DFU mode and it's done by shorting these two pads over here and connecting the flight controller to your computer. The weight of the Asgard 32 flight controller slash ESC is 20.1 grams and its dimensions are 4.4 by 56.6 by 47.3 millimeters. The next non-standard component that I'm going to use is the underground FPV Kamikaze Team AK47 motors. The unique feature of these motors is that instead of being secured by four screws on the bottom or three like normal motors, these motors are secured using a single nut on the bottom, so changing these motors should be pretty easy. So basically what you need to do is to mount these motors in this manner, and then just use this single thread on the bottom in order to secure it. Now in case the arms that you're going to use have four mounting holes, there's not going to be an issue. So you can see you can mount this motor in this way, and if you're going to use the other arm, you can still see that it fits. However, when using arms that only have three holes for mounting the motors, it can be an issue. So over here, the motor fits without any issues, but when mounting it on the other arm, you have to make sure that it's going to fit. And what I had to do is to carve the carbon over here in order to make it fit, because before it just didn't work. So you have to take it into consideration. And I'm also going to talk to underground FPV and I suggest selling these motors with another mounting options, so instead of having these two parts over here, they should be placed on the opposite direction. In terms of specs, these are 2207 motors, and you can get them in two KV options. The one I have is the 2647 KV version, which is compatible with 4S type of batteries, and in addition, you can also get a 1747 KV version, which is compatible with 6S type of batteries. The weight of the motor is 37.9 grams, and it is using 11 centimeters long, 20 AWG silicon wires. As for the other components in this build, I'm going to use the Rush Tank Ultimate VTX, the Cadex Turbo SDR2 FEB camera, and a TBS Crossfire Nano Receiver. The next thing I'm going to do is to assemble all the parts together, then configure the quadcopter and head outdoors to test it out. I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video, and I will see you in the end of it in order to give you my conclusion.
Overall, I can tell you that I had fun both building and flying this quadcopter, and at the moment of shooting this video, this is probably the most agile quadcopter that I currently have. In addition, I can tell you that the AK-47, 2207, 2647 KV motors are very powerful and also power-hungry motors, and I could get around 3 minutes of flight time when using a 4S 1500mAh LiPo battery. The only complaint I have regarding these motors is that they made this specific build a little bit difficult and I had to carve the carbon in order to make them fit. And also, while assembling two of the motors, the screw that is securing them was broken and luckily you're getting an extra screw along with each motor, but overall I think that the standard way of securing motors is a better one and I do hope that underground FAV are going to offer these motors with a standard mounting option because these are great motors, they perform well, and they're also not very expensive. As for the Asgard F7 flight controller and ESC, I can tell you that it's going to make your build pretty easy and also going to help you to lower the height of the stack. As I mentioned before, the only downside is that if one of the components is going to fail, you're going to need to replace the entire board, which is pretty expensive because the cost of the board is close to $100. Now, by the way, recently I tried a couple of mounting options for the Crossfire Immortal Antenna, and in my experience, in terms of range, this position is probably the best one I've tried so far. And finally, I can tell you that this 3D printed TPO part for mounting the antenna is a great idea, and I will need to get myself a couple of more of these mounts for my next builds. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about any of the parts that I used in this video, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.